Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Family Sedan channel, and you know, if things get just a little bit better, I might have to rename my channel to Moon Lambo rather than Moon Public Transportation, which is what it was looking like uh, would be the next progression. But uh, in case you haven't been checking, uh, prices for the crypto asset class through the roof compared to very recently, uh, you had Bitcoin hitting over $19,000 today at the time I'm recording this, just a hair shy of that. Uh, you got the market cap for the entire asset class above $900 billion. Nice to see that as well. And you've got XRP about flat. In fact, XRP is the worst performing crypto out of the top 10 today, but there are a number of reasons I just don't give a damn, not the least of which is the fact that yesterday morning before I was recording my room temperature jams, uh, XRP was the best performing crypto in the top 10 by market cap, and it was up over 6% while everything else was down over the same 24 hour period. So the fact that XRP is about flat, it's actually literally, if you look at the screen, it's literally at zero, which is why the number's in white, which is super duper rare to write exactly at zero. Um, it, it's fine, worst performer, but again, it, it's just like, when you look over the short term, eh, I mean, finally, yes, I'm willing to take the wins when we get them when XRP goes up. Fine, of course, it's fine to, to, to celebrate small victories. But I'm just saying, in the scheme of things, is it going to matter the fact that XRP is flat while, you know, most of the rest of the asset class is up at least to some degree? I don't think so. But um, it is also interesting, I'll tell you this, before getting into some specifics of what I really want to cover today. It's very interesting to see that based on the price action just from today, the sentiment, wow, how people's sentiment shifts on social media. And I mean, I can see it just hanging out on Twitter, which is where the XRP community lives, apparently. Uh, I mean, there's so many people that, and this is all it takes is what we've seen today, and they suddenly have become crypto market bulls transforming from bears into bulls. And it's just like, wow, what directionally, whatever's happening, some people, they're just so easily, just they emotionally respond here. And so what caused all this? Well, it's the new CPI new numbers that came out today. Consumer price index uh, numbers indicating that um, inflation going in the right direction, which is to say if you look from month to month, it's actually down, a.k.a. deflation. Now, of course, if you look year over year, it's still way up. I'll show you the specific numbers. But the point is, uh, with the, the Fed doing what it's been doing in terms of ratcheting up the inflation rates, Oh, I'm sorry, the, the interest rates, not inflation rates. They, the, although they, they took care of that as well by printing the dollar into oblivion, the treasury anyway. Uh, but yes, yeah, so uh, with the interest rates increasing, um, it's it's had the intended of effect to this point. And it's, it's, it'll be curious to see what happens next because the Fed, the FOMC, Federal Open Market Committee, they meet eight times per year. The next meeting is going to be at the end of this month in January here. It'll be interesting to see, are they going to stop hiking interest rates or reduce the degree to which they're hiking them? Because anything along those lines is going to result in additional euphoria and wouldn't be, if the, and that's an if, but I mean, based on what we've seen with interest, I wouldn't be surprised if something like that happens, uh, um, or inflation rather, since inflation is going down. But if that happens, my God, won't be surprised in the least if we see additional rallies here. So is the bottom in? Maybe it is, although, of course, there's always that question of the contagion. But um, before we get into additional information, I do want to be clear that I do not have a financial background of any kind. I am not offering financial advice, and you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. All right, uh, so here's a headline from CNBC, and this is what caused your, uh, your net worth to increase today if you hold crypto. And, and of course, it's true of, of equities as well, because, again crypto just follows the stock market. Stock market goes up, crypto goes up. There you go. It has nothing to do with long-term viability of crypto. Uh, there's all sorts of reasons to be optimistic for long-term viability of crypto, but I'm just <laughs> point that out to state. If you were worried about crypto prices being down, oh my God, is it ever going to stop? But yes, of course, because it had nothing to do with whether or not it should exist. Nothing to do whatsoever with whether or not it should exist. It's just humans being emotional, making Buy, important buying to selling decisions based on emotion. So anyway, the headline here, stocks close higher, NASDAQ clinches fifth day of gains after CPI report shows cooling of inflation. Uh, stocks closed higher Thursday after December's consumer price report showed inflation cooled for the month, raising hopes the Federal Reserve can once again slow interest rate hikes. 
And uh, so just to sum this up, I don't want to read the whole article. Dow Jones gained 0.64 percent. S&P 500.34 percent. NASDAQ composite 0.64 percent. And I know those percentages don't <clears throat> sound impressive if you're used to crypto, but you're talking about legacy finance. That is super duper, especially the way that it's been trending even over the last week. And then they note here, uh, December's CPI report shows a 0.1 percent dip in prices from November but prices were still 6.5% higher than the pre the prior year. Uh, that's in line with what economists polled by Dow Jones expected. In November, the report showed a 0.1% monthly gain and an annual pace of 7.1%. Yeah, so again, still you're paying way more than a year ago for stuff, but heading in the right direction, market responded. And so again, that's why when people see crypto prices going down, if you understand what's caused the prices to go down, it has nothing to do with anything that would have anything to do with long-term viability. It's like, chill, bro. There's nothing, like, in terms of that, there's nothing to worry about anyway. Uh, here's a tweet from my fellow XRP YouTuber, uh, the, the blockchain backer. He shared this chart and said, I speculate we will eventually see a plus $2,500 daily candle on Bitcoin from this range That'll leave bears in disbelief. And he's also been stating um, a, a fair bit recently that he thinks that the bottom in all likelihood is in for XRP specifically as well. Uh, and then there was this from Chart Analyst Income Sharks. He shared this chart and wrote, Tell me there was a better top or bottom signal when Twitter was calling for $100,000 at the top and $10,000 at the bottom, he's talking about Bitcoin price action, of course, and he shared this chart. This is a Bitcoin USD chart and shared this tweet of his from November 19th, 2021. So right at the time that uh, Bitcoin was hitting its all time high, close to $70,000. And Income Shark said at that time, well, when you have 90% of the Twitter influencers saying up only and targets of $100,000, I can see why the new people worry so much, LOL. <laughs> exactly. Group thinks a real thing, man. And then uh, he tweeted roughly a year later, November 23rd, 2022. And this is as we are at local lows after the FTX fallout had started anyway. Majority calling for $10,000 or lower will not even buy there if it happens. Targets will shift lower and lower. If you are scared to buy now, you'll be terrified lower. And, and look, and folks, that concept is certainly true. It's, it's the same thing back in 2018 when Bitcoin hit its actual low for the cycle of about $3,200 on December 15th, 2018, people were calling for $1,000 Bitcoin. It didn't come. And so since you never know for sure where the bottom's going to be, no matter how awesome sauce you are at technical analysis, th that's why it makes sense for someone like me, anyway, you do whatever you want, I'm not telling you to buy or sell, but it makes sense for me to just dollar cost average in which is what I've done for most of the time I've been in crypto. But now I'm so packed, I just take advantage of, of notable dips because I'm still ready. Like my bags have been packed for a long damn time, well over a year at this point. Uh, so if it's going to take the next bull portion of the cycle to come along and for me to finally be enticed to sell super duper. But in the meantime, yeah, when we saw dips like we saw in November, yeah, happy, happy to top off. And I threw down a boatload of cash and I got more on the sidelines just in case ready to be deployed. But uh, people just, <laughs> general, typical retail speculator out there really has a hard time with this basic concept here. Um, I also wanted to share with you this perspective from Mark Yusko. I'm a big fan of Mark Yusko. I know that he, uh, in my humble opinion, has some ridiculous and silly perspectives regarding XRP. But, uh, you know, just because somebody has a different opinion about XRP than me doesn't mean that they're insightful elsewhere in the world of crypto and blockchain and finance and tech and all that stuff. And I do think he very much is. So for whatever reason, um, he's not a troll. He's just not, uh, he just doesn't seem to get XRP. That's what he articulates anyway. But I, I think what he's saying here makes sense and it bodes well for very, very <laughs> spectacular times in the future when it comes to all things finance, especially crypto. So uh, here's the headline from the Daily Hoddle. Morgan Creek CEO Mark Yusko predicts Bitcoin outruns gold in 2023, says risk assets repeating early 2000s. And that, look, to me, it's always been a fun thing to compare. And, and he's talking specifically about what we've seen as markets have crashed in particular over the, the, the past year. But even, um, you know, even last market cycle, as, as Bitcoin hit its all time high close to 20 grand in 2017 and early 2018, XRP was close to four bucks, <clears throat> you know, 
even back then, and, and I think for good reason, I and many other people were comparing what was happening then and that the ridiculousness of that bubble and how hyped up people got, uh, comparing that to what happened with the dot-com boom and bust in the, uh, you know, especially in the early 2000s when it all finally collapsed, there are some interesting parallels there. And he ends up talking about that here, and it's still just as relevant now as it was five years ago. Anyway, piece reads as follows. Morgan Creek Capital CEO Mark Yusko is predicting that Bitcoin and other risk assets are going to bounce back just like the tech sector after the dot-com crash of the early 2000s. In a new interview with BlockWorks, the crypto veteran says that Bitcoin is likely to outperform gold this year after the king crypto collapsed in 2022. Quote, gold is the ultimate arbiter of value, but I think Bitcoin will have a better year than gold. Bitcoin critic Peter Schiff is going to be crying, end quote. <laughs> well, that's the truth. Gold bug Peter Schiff selling his yellow rocks, which I know are metal, but it's just funny to call them yellow rocks. But uh, <laughs> uh, look, Bitcoin leads the market. I have no problem with that whatsoever. I've been holding Bitcoin since 2017. I love seeing Bitcoin doing well because I know that the rest of the market follows. I mean, today, fine, a lot of it was moving in tandem. Uh, XRP happened to not be. But when things really get heated up, that's when you see Bitcoin start to eat the market share of, of alts and it just takes off. But then eventually money flows out of that and goes into large cap coins, then mid cap coins and, and small cap coins. It just kind of cycles and repeats. And XRP historically is just red legged behind. So <laughs> that's why like for a lot of people, it seems like more quote unquote boring. Uh, but it just it's 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 volatile because it's crypto. Yes. But if you compare it to other cryptos, it's like it trades sideways for much longer periods of time, even though it does move in tandem. So yes, if you zoom out on a chart, you will see XRP moves in tandem with the rest of the market. But I'm just saying when it goes, it really goes. It's just, that's just a characteristic that there has, that has always been part of XRP. I don't know if it's always going to be like that. Probably not. But well, I mean, at some point things are going to cool down anyway, just because the excitement around crypto will go away. It'll be adopted by the, you know, the world over. So certainly by then. But uh, in the meantime, we get to have fun with this. Anyway, peace continues. Yusko compares current market conditions for risk assets like Bitcoin and tech stocks to the dot-com bubble of the early 2000s. Just like when markets crashed and sentiment turned sour before rebounding hard back then, the fund manager says something similar is likely brewing. Quote, I'm old. I lived through 2001, 2002. This is exactly... Like what happened, like uh, uh, this is exactly like exactly what happened in 2001 and 2002. Enron defrauded people. Tyco defrauded people. People were like, oh, this world come. They will never be this internet thing. It's going to die and pets.com is stupid. If you look at all the comparisons of the bubble that we just lived through to 2000, they all look the same. NASDAQ went up and then it went down 84%. Peloton went up and went down and Tesla went up and went down. Everything looks like this bubble chart. Then NASDAQ went parabolic. Now it took 20 years, but it went super parabolic. It went way higher than the 2000 peak, end quote. Right, and so all the people, folks, <laughs> moral of the story, for the people that just hung on, they did well. Now, since we're in crypto, in order to have ridiculous returns, because there's so little money in it, uh, and it's it's truly global, there's so many reasons, uh, you, you don't have to wait as long as you did with these asset classes that have been part of legacy finance for the longest damn time. And I think that's still true even in 2023 here. But it really is interesting to see these types of behavioral comparisons, and people always think it's the end of the world, this and that, and I never think it's the end of the world, which is why... Even as we're in bear market territory now, despite the happiness of today, uh, I'm thrilled. Just like I was thrilled in 2018 when everybody's saying, again, crypto's dead. It's going to zero. All the haters say all that nonsense. I'm having a dandy old time because I know it's nonsense. <laughs> like, let people just jabber on all they want. I don't care. They're saying nonsensical things. Uh, so we still don't know what maturation of this asset class is going to look like. And I'm very excited to see what that looks like. But in the meantime, just enjoy the ride. We are in for incredible times yet ahead. As XRP holders, I still think we're going to have, you know, the, that regulatory clarity. You know, we're, we're going to be entering a bull market soon enough if it hasn't already technically started. 
You know, we got our, most of us anyway, many of us at least, got the flare airdrop on our Songbird. And, and that's going to be here for the bull market too. And then there's all the other opportunities in crypto. My gosh, why would you not be excited to be here right now? Well, I know you are because you're paying attention to what's happening in crypto, but you get what I'm saying, right? There's so many people that once markets started cratering, they just stopped paying attention. I'm like, okay, well, that was the most important time to pay attention to saying. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the Moon Family Sedan.